Hey guys, how's it going? Welcome back to another ATD video. And today we're gonna be doing some more work on the old Shabubbin. Uh, just got some brake parts that came in. I need to redo the front brakes. These rotors are warped and have been warped for, I think ever since I've had it. Um, I'm finally sick and tired of it. We're just gonna go with the AC Delco. I got the good AC Delco ones. These ones, uh, at the time of me purchasing them, weren't too bad. These are like the most expensive rotors you can get on AC Delco, on Rock Auto that is. Um, these ones weren't too expensive, there weren't too much more I should say, than just the regular not grooved rotor. These aren't, these are grooved but I don't really know how much they actually do. But we're chunky, so I don't know, might as well go with the best since I've had this thing for a long time and it's still good on the brake so might as well just get the best ones and then i don't gotta worry about it for a long time and i got the uh pads here comes with a cool little diagram that's pretty cool but i got these uh i think they're semi-ceramic or um i don't think they're fully ceramic but they are the in between there go. there's the uh, part number for the brake pads that i got here is the part number for the rotors number for the box or for the rotors i should say anyway let's take these front wheels off and uh see how easy i've never done the brakes in this before so let's see how uh see how this goes we'll go outside of here this is it's from my wheels i don't think it's not as far as i'm aware it's not a spacer because when you look at it the rim lines up perfectly with this tab i originally thought it was a spacer but as you can see the rim still makes contact with the wheel so i don't really know what it is it must be like it's some kind of centering device let's um Let's break these caliper bolts loose and see what happens. Well, I've already run into a snag. I don't have the right, uh, is it an Allen key thing? I don't have the right, uh, thing to do that. Okay, well, the plot thickens. After, uh, watching the, uh, video I just recorded, I realized, wait, those aren't star. That's a, uh, that's an Allen key. So, I actually do have an Allen key. It's a 3 8 so they do fit but they are very tight which is a good thing there it goes just want to make sure it's in all the way so i've tried cranking on these a little bit um i just i'm gonna heat that up just because i am not going to strip these bolts so don't want to have to deal with that so i'm going to heat these up Allen key not exactly my best friends in life these things damn I don't think these breaks have been done in a long time there it goes got some movement out of it that was all of the foot pounds Okay, yeah, that's good and loose now. Whew, one down. I don't know if the heat helped, but I'm going to use it on that side as well. Just in case it did help. I want to make sure. I'm going to get that rubber part too hot. I don't get every one of those. There it goes. <sighs> awesome. No breakage. 
We love that. You know, the award goes to Chevy for um, in the 90s for making brakes interesting. All the brakes I've done, never done Allen keys before. Everybody was a little lost in the 90s on what to do. And in the 80s. Get it with my hand yet. He transferred, that's for sure. Does that mean it's out when it stops? <laughs> We've got moving calipage. That's good. I'm gonna have to squeeze in the piston. Okay, phone ran out of storage <clears throat> when I uh, started taking this off. Um, was able to get it off. Um, and I think I was mess. I started messing with these slider pins, and I realized that, as you can see, they don't do much sliding. Um, so while that was while my phone was uploading videos, I went and uh, did the other side, so I know what I'm getting myself into here. Uh, that went well. Those were also stuck, so I was able to unfree that side, so I'll do the same thing I did here. Um, I just started taking off these pads, yeah. I like to use, to get this, to get this one off, it's got little clamps. For the old ones, you just stick these in there and pry it up out of the well. And if you're trying to save them, do it like this. Stick it in there and twist it, and then pull up. It's got to come out as well. So actually, yeah, like that. That's how you do it. Stick it in there and push against itself, and it'll actually slide out. I think Dodge, or I think it was a Ford I did, had that same kind of system. Or maybe it was another Chevy. I don't know. Could be. Anyway, um, these pins, they do not move at all. Well, these ones, I don't know if I tested on these ones, but... They are good and stuck is the best way to, uh, to say that. Pop these little caps off just by doing that. It's really simple. I just kind of twist at the same time and they usually come right off. Now, there's supposed to be grease in there. And, uh, well, there ain't it all left. She's all gone. And you can see I can... This one moves just fine. But that one... Is supposed to move. <laughs> so... Hopefully this works on this side. I just stuck these... And pushed it. Yep, okay. So these ones are working. That's good. I don't say working, but they move. They definitely weren't working. I'm gonna stick these this way and then you can shoot her on out. Now if they're really good you can just pull, but you know last time I couldn't pull it. I had to get the vice grips out. So see if this one comes out. Let's get all that crap out of there. Yeah, that one's tight. Maybe these would have worked, but I don't know. Wouldn't trust them. Need to grab vice grips. So the goal here is to reuse this caliper, um, just because I don't want to go out and spend the money on a brand new one. And this one works fine. And clearly, it doesn't work fine, but it works good enough. Yeah, there's still grease on that one. That's good. How did I set it up last time? I don't know. Oh, like that. There we go. Not like that. Get some vice grips on here if yours are like mine. And just give her a yank. There we go. And then drop it in the dirt. It's good for it. These ones are not as bad as the driver's side. Though. These, these ones, the other ones were really in there. This one's also in there pretty good. Yeah, that's supposed to slide, not do that. Now we got those out, you can... I just stuck some penetrating fluid in there and cleaned out all the gunk. 
unkink my brake line real quick. I just um, stuck some penetrating fluid in there and just cleaned it out with a shop towel. Just to get all that crap out of there. At least on the other side, they were really bad. Oh, oh. Yeah, and it's all nasty in there. There's all kinds of nasty. Look at all the grit and sand and stuff. So I'm going to clean these out. Um, I'll bring you guys back. It's really all you got to do is just spray. I wouldn't do brake cleaner because then you might mess with these uh, rubber uh, rings in there. Um, I use just some WD-40. It can be the penetrant stuff or whatever. I just use this. It's not too bad on the bushings. So I'm going to clean these out and uh, I'll be right back. The thing you want to do while you're cleaning those up is clean up this surface here, this one down here, this one here. I guess I can show you here and here. And right, you can see kind of where it was rubbing. You want to clean those up, at least with a wire wheel or a wire brush if you can get one in there. And um, clean that up because that's where the back pad kind of slides here and the, these match up um, in these brackets right here. So just wire wheel those and uh, get all that cleaned up and then later we put that um, silicone grease on that just to just to help it. Um, figured I'd mention that. I'm going to clean this up with a wire wheel. Um, get as much of it I can with it at least and then uh, use a wire brush. you get all those cleaned up and you got these pins cleaned up wire wheeled them so there's no more grooves on them and that's all nice and smooth now um, the kit sent me this silicone compound uh, if you don't have some of that apparently you're supposed to use a silicone and not a petroleum based grease you can't use bearing grease I guess I don't know I saw a YouTube video um, but they sent me this in the kit so I'm gonna use this, that's what it's for. It gives you a diagram. I showed you the diagram in the box. Take this and smear it on. And this here unit. Smear it on here and then I like, I put it on all of the little, all the points that touch so I can, on the other side. That way we can have grease all the way around. You don't need like a lot because the seals will actually take quite a bit of it off anyway. Um, just as long as it's coated, it'll be good. Then I went and just kind of made sure all the seals had some grease in it from the last one. And then push it in carefully. You don't want to rip any seals. Kind of give it a little twist. Just like that. That's how they're supposed to go, <laughs> not how they were last time. And you can see I pushed a bunch of it out. And since it did that, I like to just grab it and then stick it on this bolt. Because this one's supposed to have some grease in there too. So I'll get some grease on that. Now this slides how it's supposed to. And I'm just going to go a little overkill. Grease that side. There we go. Perfect. That is how that's supposed to be. Stick that back there, and you're done. I'm gonna do the other one, and then uh, we'll get put it back together. Now that you got all those greased up, just stick the. Uh, leftover grease and I'm going to grease where the um, brakes are going to ride just to help it initially go. I'm going to rub some of that grease back there where this back shoe rides. And the same thing on this one. Put this side. 
Get all that nice and greased up there. And then do these outer ones here. This is, this is where it meets the uh, the uh, control arm. It's not crucial, I don't think. I think it does slide a little bit on there, but I got leftover grease, and I'm going to use it. I paid for it. So, epic. We are greased unnecessarily. Okay, once you get all those all greased up, I can stick the pads on. Lower pad's pretty obvious. It's got these little tangs that stick down here. So I'll just maneuver it so you can get it in there. Kind of like that, maybe. And then just go down like that. Make sure your piston's in most of the way, or all the way that it needs to be. Here, I'm gonna stick these in straight. these fitting. That's slightly annoying. What happens if we do this? I don't think that's recommended, but apparently, um, <laughs> apparently that's how she's going to go. It's definitely moving in there, so I don't know. I guess we'll find out if that's gonna work or not. This one here, these are kind of tricky to do. It's kind of the same thing as getting them off. Just kind of get one side of it going. I get that tab back there. So it clicks. get this one, get it close, at least. There we, there we go, that side's in now. I just had to move it over. Push it against it and down. There you go. Click, click, that one is in there. Now, we can stick the rotor on. Color good. I'm going to investigate why this one gave me such trouble. The other one went in perfectly. Um, no hang-ups. I don't know why this one's hanging. Maybe there's a casting imperfection somewhere. But it's definitely... Yeah, it's not moving. It's not even set in there all the way. So I'm going to fiddle with that and see why that's the case. Okay, so I got it. All I did was stick it with the wire wheel and just wire wheeled the paint off. There was just too much paint. On it. So that's all that was. I was worried that there was some kind of imperfection with it, but now it just, as you can see, it, it goes right in now. So now, now that's in perfect. So make sure the paint's not rubbing because apparently that's an issue. But now we're good to go and we can stick the rotor on. Now we can take this old crusty thing off of here. Yes, crusty it is. Got some fancy ones. I didn't put any um, protective grease on these. Normally there's um, a slight coating of grease, but definitely check when you put your rotors on that you clean off the grease. Mine are already degreased. To the rotors now, a little better view. Nice. Some nice rotors. Hopefully they don't work because these supposedly cooling fins. I don't know. Just, I feel like if they're going to be slit, they got to go all the way through. But I am not an engineer. Alright, now we can stick the caliper on. Assuming we got the uh, piston pushed far enough away, which we don't. Damn it. It's like so close. I'm trying to reach it. 
I'm gonna use the brake pad a little. Not have one. I'm gonna take the damn brake pad out. I can squeeze it like two, like a freaking centimeter. I've got installed for the third time now. Jammer on here. Oh, you know what? We've almost, I almost forgot. Put a little bit of grease on the uh, netting surface right here. Leave, I'm filming. Looking bird. They're making so much noise. Sure. That's good. Now, I can set this here unit down. Jiggle, jiggle. I'm gonna go in literally just perfect. Something like that. There it goes. Now she's installed. See? Spin it. Now, put your gloves on because those bolts are greasy. Take these Allen key bolts of all things and screw them in. Simply. And I can stick these little rubber. Once you got these going quite a ways, you can stick these little rubber guys on here. These are actually really tricky to get back on. Yeah, really mess with it to get it to go. Had to use pliers on the other side. Get her the frig on. That's gonna do. <laughs> I can't get it all the way on. I did do this last time. Mind your brake line, but that's how I did it. It's starting to bend it a little bit, so. Just be a little wary of that. Oh, this one's really difficult to get on. There we go. And the bottom one, which you can't see. This one you can twist with your hand because you got room, so it's not as bad. Now, you stick your rotor and you should have plenty of movement. Still got to tighten these with this goddamn Allen key. Did I bring that over? I did. Once you tighten that, you are good to go. I'll bring you guys back when I'm done. There we go. Once you got all that tightened up, I just got it. I didn't look at the part of the spec. I just got it tight. Um, so I'm going to put your mystery rings back on, which is probably only vehicle specific to me. I don't know. Anywho, I'm going to stick these wheels on and we'll go for a test drive. So I actually filmed this right after doing the uh, fuel pump thing, or fuel pump video. So we're gonna go get some gas while we uh, test these new brakes. And so far, they are working uh, working well. Definitely need to bleed my brakes next though. That's one thing from driving other vehicles is this pedal is so spongy. I was thinking about doing it then, but I didn't have any other people with me. So we're just gonna live with it for now. Mint. Actually, I think my truck might have been starved for fuel for that fuel pump because my engine light just went off, which was a code for an O2 sensor, uh, bank two. So I think uh, 
think that was probably why it was coming up every once in a while. I was, it was starving for fuel and running weird. But it's probably just because I got a new fuel pump, but it feels like I got a little bit more power. Um, it doesn't pull anymore when you put the brakes on. That is great. It's, I didn't realize how shitty the rotors were. There's no pulse in the pedal. You just put it down and it stops. Pretty crazy what uh, new brakes will do for you. All right, guys. Thank you for watching. Uh, if this helped you at all, give it a like. Uh, if it didn't, don't give it a like. Um, just don't give it a thumbs down. You know, that's a little depressing. But anyway, I'm going to uh, put all these tools away so I can enjoy this wonderful evening over here. As you can see, it was quite quite lovely out. It's the perfect temperature. It is 73 degrees right now. It is amazing. The grass is green. The tree is green. The sun is out. My car runs good. It stops good. Anyway, thank you guys for watching, and I'll uh, see y'all in the next one. Peace.